Hello, I'm Bernard Rieke. I work at Sam Fraser University in beautiful British Columbia near Vancouver, where I lead the iSpace Lab. So there are a lot of different ways to move continuously through virtual reality, but often enough the locomotion itself is actually not the primary goal, but really it's meant to support something else. Often you actually want to go somewhere and do something to interact, to manipulate, um, and one of the challenges there's often that you actually want to do this concurrently in reality. So for example, at a conference, you might want to carry a cup of coffee while maybe also holding your cell phone or shaking hands, opening doors, all these kind of things. And when you're physically walking, that's actually quite simple. But imagine being in a telepresence scenario, controlling a telepresence robot or in virtual reality. Often enough, you use one or maybe even both of the hands to do this task. What you wanted to do in this study is to see whether we could design improved interfaces that allow you to do concurrent locomotion and interaction tasks um, uh, if you cannot physically walk. So for this, we use the head trusting and the leading based interfaces, similar to the videos you see in the bottom right. But first of all, what do you actually know about concurrent locomotion and object interaction in virtual reality? Well, it turns out there actually isn't that much research on it. In one paper here, by Weedman, the task was really to solve escape room puzzle horror VR game. So you had to do a couple of interaction tasks and what people found in there was that using the gamepad and the controller really led to the worst user experience and the worst motion sickness. Walking, teleporting, using track controllers did a lot better, was more intuitive, best user experience, higher presence and much lower motion sickness rating. And the food sliding omnidirectional treadmill without any controllers was kind of in between. So user experience and presence was still pretty good. Um, motion sickness was a little bit worse, but still lots of technical challenges. So really interesting study, but they didn't really isolate the effect of locomotion and interaction. And also people could really do one task after the other. So it wasn't really a concurrent locomotion and interaction task. There's another really interesting paper by Griffin and colleagues where people really had to shoot the enemies just with one gun in each hand while re gathering ammunition and avoiding getting shot in a relatively simple VR shooter game. They compared for different locomotion interfaces, two with the controller, two hands-free, but didn't really find that many differences in interaction or accuracy. The Hetel hands-free uh, version did best at avoiding be being hit Hands free also result in higher presence, but also increased cognitive load. Controller was best at collecting ammunition. And they concluded that though hands free methods offer higher presence, they don't outperform hands busy locomotion methods in terms of performance. So we thought, well, okay, let's take this on as a challenge and see that we can design better hands free interfaces. And so here I'll present data where we compare two of our relatively new leaning based interfaces. So why are we interested in that? So walking is still considered the gold standard in virtual reality, but it's not always feasible. Like if you have a really large virtual environment, then there's never enough physical space to walk. There might be safety issues, might be a bit expensive to somehow book this big space. Movement speed is limited. There might be fatigue and accessibility issues if people cannot physically walk. Handheld controllers are great in a way, they come out of the box, they are prevalent, but they don't really give us any vestibular proprioceptive self-motion cues. So clearly people, by through the controllers, they don't really have any self-motion perception. Uh, so movement realism can be reduced, which can exacerbate uh, adverse side effects such as disorientation, cyber sickness, or breaks in presence and immersion. So one of the things we're interested in studying this project was to see whether leaning based interfaces could help overcome these limitations of the standard controller methods and also whether a locomotion effectiveness might actually affect interaction inter effectiveness. So to do this we actually had to design our new ta own task because there aren't really a lot of concurrent locomotion and interaction tasks available. So we did this using a Beat Saber-like uh, task where you have a beat in the background and uh, it, matching this you, uh, one per second, one per beat, basically you have to continuously touch these uh, raising balls with your lightsaber sword. And in addition, we also ask you to maneuver. 
So for this, you have this semi-transparent enclosure, kind of cylindrical beam enclosure. It's kind of almost like a light beam that you have to stay inside. When you're inside, the sound gets louder and it moves on a predictable and uh, continuously moving, smoothly curved route. And we also have a dual task score. We really wanted people to do uh, well in both tasks. And uh, so we took the minimum of the motion and the action score for each frame as the dual task score. And to investigate this, we compared four different locomotion conditions. So the handheld controller, here we used a controller directed steering, so direction of the controller held in the left or non-dominant hand, controls where you're going, and the right one is used for interaction. We also want to try the handheld controller where we just use the thumbsticks basically, control on transition doesn't matter, but that performed so badly in the pilot test that we had to drop this because people just got sick and really literally couldn't do the task. Um, so we compared it with the handheld controller with a head joystick, which is a leaning based seated interface where the HMD deflection from the zero point determines the locomotion or translation speed and direction. And the Navi board, uh, similar, but you're standing and in the center there's a wooden platform and surrounding that is a much softer platform so you get tactile feedback how far you are away from the center. And walking is just standard walking with a wireless HMD. Now importantly, the rotations in VR were always performed physically, where the translations were either done by thumbstick, seated leaning, standing leaning, maybe one step and uh, walking. And our prediction was that the increasingly embodied interaction and proprioceptive vestibular motion cues for the translation might improve uh, especially behavioral performance measures. So we predicted that the head joystick uh, might outperform the controller, Navi board might maybe be a little bit better, and walking should be probably a lot better because there you get full self-motion cues. But also the, the, the different interfaces uh, differ by familiarity. Everybody had experience with the handheld controller and walking, but nobody with the head joystick and navy board. So that would predict that the leaning based interface should perform worse and but be fairly similar. But actually through our pilot testing and previous studies, we know that this leaning based interface can actually be learned fairly easily. So our main hypothesis was uh, really the one about the amount of embodied self motion cues. So what did we find? Indeed, as predicted, walking clearly outperformed the controller-based locomotion here when you look at the total score. And the head joystick and the navy board are kind of in between. If you look at the plan contrast, head joystick did outperform the controller, navy board was a little bit uh, better, but walking clearly was the gold standard and did a lot better. Just to check, we're still in the middle of analyzing the data. The Tuggy HSD postdoc PRS test showed a similar pattern, but also showed how the Navi board is definitely a lot better than the controller. And yeah, that's our result so far, which is aligned with our hypothesis about the importance of embodied interaction and self motion cues. Now, if you look at the locomotion measures, measures here, the navigation score, we see a similar trend. So walking best, controller burst, and the lean based uh, interfaces in between, again aligned with our hypothesis, and also the number of times people didn't manage to stay within this moving platform, this moving beam, shows a similar trend. Controller burst, walking best, and some benefit of uh, the leaning based interfaces over the controller. Now, object interaction measures, here we were interested to see whether by changing the locomotion interface, people would also do better on the concurrent interaction task. And indeed, they did. So walking, again, performed best. The lean based interfaces still performed better than the controller, but not as good as for walking. Again, aligned with our hypothesis. And similar trends, we look at, look at the number of targets that people could pop, and also the number of targets they actually missed. So clearly the locomotion interface does affect the effectiveness of the object interaction. And we might wonder, well, why is that? Is it because of the increased cognitive load, ease of use, learnability, whether it's hands-free? So let's take a look at the other user experience measures that we collected. So task load, 
uh, navigational load was clearly lowest for the walking condition, but not too many differences for the other ones. Ease of use, again, walking winds, ease of learning, similar, presence also highest. Although the Navi board here did outperform the controller and immersion was also clearly highest for walking. So again, similar pattern. User experience enjoyment was clearly highest for walking, but the Navi board also did fairly well and outperformed the controller. Action intensity, so the sensation of self motion really increased the more embodied self motion cues you had, but was of course highest with walking because he, well, physically moved. The suitability for daily use, we were somewhat surprised that the controller didn't do much better because people had so much experience with it. Uh, but still walking uh, was the best here and the leaning inter based interfaces were maybe slightly but not significantly below the controller. Long term usage, similar pattern overall. When we asked people to rate the overall usability, that was clearly highest for walking. And the other ones were fairly similar. Overall preference, again walking was the best, uh, followed by the Navi board which still outperformed the controller. So again similar response pattern. Motion sickness, finally, is still one of the key aspects and challenges of virtual reality to not get people sick. And what we found indeed is that the more embodied the interface was, the better people performed, aligned with our hypotheses. So uh, motion sickness was really reduced for the standing interfaces, even though postural instability theory would kind of predict the opposite. Because when you're standing, you sway more, and that should really increase motion sickness. Here we observed the opposite. And the head joystick, so the seated leaning based, was somewhat in between. So motion sickness was a bit lower compared to the controller, but still a bit higher than compared to walking. So what can we conclude here? Well, walking clearly outperformed all the other interface, so would argue it's still the gold standard for continuous locomotion. Big open question where we have some evidence is really why the leaning based interfaces and particularly the Navi board outperformed the handheld controller. And we know it's not because of familiarity, because nobody had tried them out, and it's not really what the previous design guidelines suggested. So what could it be? So let's look a bit more into the qualitative data. So we argued that leaning based interfaces are a bit more embodied and provide at least some proprioceptive and vestibular translational self motion cues. And some of the participants indeed did uh, touch up and mention these aspects. One mentioned using our physical body to move is easier than controller as I have more control over my physical body. Or head movement was more natural than the controller. Navi board had more movement than head joystick and controller which made me more energized. So this different aspect like engagement that might be important to look at in future research. Participant 14 mentioned that Navibot was pretty much the same as walking and I could feel my whole body and feel the environment more. It feels more like a reality to me. So perceived realism is another important aspect. And the person goes on, head joystick, I feel actually traveling in the virtual reality. Controller does not really feel like we are. It's like playing a desktop game. So there's something about the embodiment that indeed might be useful. Another aspect is that for the leaning based interface, it's similar to walk when we separate the locomotion from the object interaction. So use your whole body for locomotion and the hands for interaction, similar to what you do for walking. And people uh, mentioned these in their responses in the post-experimental interview. It was, not easy. it was not easy to use controller for multiple tasks and the controller required me to control moving my head, arm, sword, joystick, finger and chair which was just too many things to control. So in conclusion, we argue that leaning based and other more embodied interface are really quite promising and in this study outperformed the highly trained handheld controller, even a really ch quite challenging concurrent maneuvering and interaction dual task. That's it. And of course you can find more information on our website or contact us there. Thanks for listening.